Hey guys, so today's project is something a little different for this channel. I've been asked to look at a Honda Accord, I believe it's a 99, that runs bad. So apparently the old original engine had low compression so they got a eBay engine put in here and I guess it's never run right since. I've been told it's verified, has good compression, etc. It runs, it idles poorly and throws some codes. So I'll start it up and show you what it's doing. So it idles poorly, and apparently if you plug in this vacuum hose, this is the uh, owner's diagnosis, it, once it warms up it won't idle, but you can unhook this and it idles better, and apparently when you drive it and come to a stop it'll die. That appears to be the EVAP code, or EVAP hose, so that's just giving it a little extra air, and, it, and I guess also apparently I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's awful black, awful rich. So I think we'll start by pulling some codes out here and see what the codes say. I've plugged in my Bluetooth interface. It's kind of kind of a little scary when the OBD2 connector is just hanging there. So let's. See what codes we have. PO108 powertrain, manifold absolute pressure, barometric pressure circuit high. So being a Honda map sensor higher than expected. Honda EVAP emission control system leak. That's probably that uh, vacuum hose that's unhooked. I'm going to ignore that one for now. I'm going to go look at this map sensor. The map sensor is located right here on top of the throttle body. It has three wires, power, a ground, and a signal. I have the key on right now, and I should have five volts powering this thing up according to what information I've found. 4.97. Okay. I have also written down what colors do what. There's a red and yellow, that's the power. Green and white is the zero volts of the ground. And then there's a red and green, that should be my signal going back to the ECU. What I should be able to do is plug this back in. I'm gonna have to jam something in the back of this red and green wire to read the voltage coming out of it and see what signal it's sending. I did notice it looks like that wire maybe cut right there problem but we get a paper clip or something to jam in there. Well that little rubber gasket is like rock hard. I don't know if I'll be able to get this in there. Does not look like it. So maybe somebody's already been here and they bared the wire right there so they could read the signal. Let me see if I can get the meter on that, and we'll start the car and see if we can get a reading from that. Actually, with the key on, which it still is, I have the ground attached directly to the battery. Okay, so it's putting out 2.6 volts, and we'll start it and see if that changes. <laughs> Same voltage. Doesn't change any. So I have the map sensor taken out of the manifold. Still have our 2.6 volts without the car doing anything running. Let's see if it reacts to applying a vacuum to it. So I have a vacuum pump, a little chunk of hose. Let's see if it'll pull a vacuum on here. Should be a vacuum there. No change. I've, 
rigged up this little alligator clip jumper wire set up so I don't need to hold the meter. Still 2.6 volts, we're making good connection. Let me pump this. in it, release it, no change. So in the trunk, let me make sure, let me try one more time. It's definitely holding the vacuum. In the back of the car, in the back seat, there's another map sensor. that does. So I have higher voltage to start with. Look at that. Apply a vacuum and it drops. So we're going to put this other map sensor back in here and Go from there. I don't like how crusty that is. I'm gonna clean that off a little bit. Put a little oil on that O-ring, make sure it's sealing properly. My vacuum gauge hooked up just for another reference port and point to make sure we're actually pulling vacuum. We don't have a huge vacuum leak somewhere else. Try to get my meter hooked back up and we can look at the value. I would expect our vacuum to be better than that at idle about 10 inches. And our value on our map sensor output really hasn't changed. It's odd that that doesn't even change at all. So there could be no vacuum in the manifold. Although my vacuum gauge is telling me there is vacuum. Back to the drawing board. So when I had the car running, this value never changed, but I'm beginning to suspect there's a timing issue or a vacuum leak, massive leak somewhere. There's my 2.86 volts. I can apply vacuum to it, and it drops down on the meter, and on the app here, I'm looking at real-time information, the key's still on. If you look at vacuum right here, it's, it's going down, so there should be so obviously that vacuum signal there is getting to the ECU, but when I was running it was like point, point oh 0.04, it was real low, so so I, I don't think there's a problem with this map sensor. I think there may have been with the other one, but we can test that real quick just for entertainment purposes. Since it's so easy to pop off here. Come on. Reads a little lower to start with. 2.6. See? It's not really even changing. It's trying to. It's not changing on the ECU or on the meter. So that one's definitely bad. Okay, so I've decided I want to go in and check the basics on this car and make sure the timing marks are lined up and just start from ground zero. So I'm going to get that cover off. I think this top portion of the cover will come off and I can see the cam timing marks 
and then there is apparently a mark way down there if you can see it on the balancer and the lower timing cover so I want to verify the lows line up correctly so I have this timing belt cover off at least the upper one which you have to remove the valve cover cam cover to get to I have it lined up on the white mark down there I don't know if you can see that let me try to get you in here so there's a little V down on the timing cover right there and there's a white mark below it I don't know if it'll show up or not but that that's apparently top dead center on the timing belt sprocket it says up and that's gonna be hard to read also and there's a line on either side that's supposed to line up with a horizontal plane of the top of the cylinder head the only way I could really check it was I put my makeup mirror down in there and that is my timing mark it's about it looks a tooth off to me but what I also noticed is that you know, I did earlier, but this timing belt. Look on the back side. This timing belt seems awful loose. And since we're running out of daylight and there's a lot of noise out here, I'm going to tackle this in the morning and pull the entire front cover off everything and so we can get a little better look and try to line it up better so I spent yesterday or party yesterday and stripped the front timing cover off this vehicle for top dead center there's a key key way it should be straight up so that's pretty much straight up and there's also that FSA if you can see that that's an arrow in there is it pointer back behind that so the crankshaft's at top dead center this car is equipped with balance shafts also that is the mark for the rear one and it should be down here so it appears to be a tooth off so the front one I'll hold the camera in there if you can see that there's a mark on the front of that one and that should be pointing straight forward and also right down here that mark and that mark should line up so that's off and then the cam mark is definitely appears to me to be one tooth forward so everything's screwed up here so I'm going to strip the belt off and start it over I didn't drive it much but I suspect it probably vibrated a good bit too the tensioner is right down here there's a 14 millimeter bolt on it, stud, whatever. So there's a 14 that locks it down. And then down here behind it, there's a 10. And there's no way I'm going to be able to film that. So I'm going to take that loose, get that tensioner loosened. All the balancer belt stuff is off. Now the timing belt tensioner is right behind it. It looks like if I take this 10 mil bolt loose and then I'll take the tension off the timing belt wow that was like not tight at all yeah oh okay that but I guess it was bottomed out all the way anyway so it looks like to relieve the tension you just push down so I'm gonna push down and tighten that back up I'm not changing this belt. I'm just trying to get the timing marks correct. That could be, that might be enough. There's a dot right there. 
and a mark directly behind it. So, and an arrow up there also. So that is correct. Now I should be able to pull the belt off the cam sprocket, turn it, put it back on. I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you that. I slid the belt, loosened the tensioner and slid the belt off, turned, kind of kept the teeth engaged and turned it till I could feel it slip over a tooth and slid it back on. The mark on the bottom, still correct. Look at that. This is the tensioner bolt. I'm gonna loosen it and it should, that spring should pull the tensioner up. It should be about correct. We tighten it and then we will rotate the engine. And see if our marks line up again. So the timing belt's all good. I think I'm happy with that. I believe that's lined up properly now. Now for the balance shaft belt. So apparently a fun little bit of information is this is not one to one. There's a gear behind here. So you could get the timing off. The mark would be right, but the balance shaft has like a counterweight lobe in it. Could be at the wrong position. So there's a plug in the back of the engine you pull out and you stick in a, I think I said, I read a six by 100 millimeter bolt. I had a long five millimeter Allen wrench that went in there. And it um, brought my mark down to here where I think it is correct. Because you can only, that'll only go in in one position. You have to turn this about four or five times to get it right. The front balance shaft, this mark needs to go forward and there's a mark also up on top. I think I showed you that earlier. So now we should be able to blast this bolt back out of here, put the pulley back on for the last time and get this balance belt set up. That belt is on there. The Allen wrench is still in position. It's kind of nice because it actually holds this from turning and the marks in the front line up. Next is the tensioner. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to show you. So I'll get that on there. All the balancer setups back on. Tensioned. My Allen wrench is out of the back of the block and the plug's in there. So I don't know if I showed this yet. Still at top dead center. The straight edge across the valve cover. Right there is my timing mark. So it is almost dead nuts on it. So that's as good as it's gonna get. So I think we're all good now. I was gonna try to test run this without putting all this back together, but I need to put the valve cover on. So I'm confident enough, I'm gonna stick it all back together and we'll run it. We're all back together minus the accessory drive belts. Let's see what happens. misfire for some reason but now we have vacuum so what I may do is clean these spark plugs because they are black as heck so I hooked the belts back up disconnected the battery thinking maybe it would kind of try to relearn itself no fault codes odd I'm not reading any vacuum going to the ECU but I'm reading it on the vacuum gauge. So back to this Honda today, it's had me pretty much baffled. So I decided I would pull the throttle body off and just do an inspection on it. And it looks as though the throttle position sensor has been replaced. So I was gonna go th figure out what I need to do to calibrate that, make sure that's in the right position. So I, I started looking at the map sensor, and that's where it's located, and the channel that follows it down where it gets its signal from the intake. So the more I looked, 
I discovered there's no gasket on here. And I'll make sure this shows up. Not only it was a silicone gasket, but right there where the reference port for the map sensor is, that gasket has pretty much completely clogged that passage to the map sensor. So that's no wonder it wasn't responding. So I'm going to clean all that silicone off there and I went and purchased a gasket for like three dollars. So we will replace that gasket, calibrate the TPS or set it right and see what happens. I have a new gasket on the throttle body, cleaned the throttle body, hooked everything back up, have diagnostic tools hooked up. I'm hoping we start this thing and it just runs fine. I'm hoping the camera doesn't fall over when I start it. Let's see. Well, I'll be dogged. I actually have a reading now on the map sensor. And look, you can see that. I'm actually reading vacuum to the ECU. Like 16 inches is what I would kind of expect. So now we just have to solve this whole this whole idling deal. See if it revs up. Let's see if we have black smoke. We do not appear to have black smoke. Now what may be the problem is that throttle position. It thinks it's at 9%. So I may need to go adjust that. I need to do a little more research on that. But we have some success here. At 15 inches there, now 17 here. Now when I rev this up, that bolt reading should change. I apparently neglected to plug in the idle speed motor, so let's try it again with that plugged in. Fault's cleared also. So I'm back probing throttle position sensor. This is at idle, 0.5 volts as I move it. it says I should go up to about four and a half. So that appears to be working right. So I may let this run a little while and try to relearn itself. Try to get this done before the leaf blowers get too close. So this car is sat overnight. Let's give it a cold start and see how it runs. I'm pretty happy with that. No check engine light. Actually drove it yesterday and it seems to drive fine. So to summarize, we had a code for a map sensor and the timing belt was off a tooth. So we got the timing belt back on, saw the code for the map sensor, found the silicone plug in the vacuum port for the map sensor, put a new gasket on that and everything seems to be good now. So. We'll wash some of the bird crap off here and some of the pollen, go for another drive, and this car will be done. Thanks for watching and subscribing. We'll see you soon. So tonight's meal. Boston butt. Let's get that out of there and we'll let that rest for a few minutes. And then we'll see if it'll shred. So this has been inside resting for about 20 minutes or so. One way to tell if you've done a good job on it is if you have a hard time getting it off the smoker because the bone wants to fall out or wants to fall apart. So if you can pull the bone out, 
kind of like that. It's going to be a good one. I'm going to have these shredding forks. And you just start pulling it apart. And if it pulls apart like nothing, you have done it correctly. So that is pulled pork. Uh, 